In part one of my awesome Amazon adventure, I took you to the amazing Monkey Island in the Colombian Amazon to meet these cute little squirrel monkeys. Next up in part two, we're off to visit the indigenous village of Macedonia before heading off to the fascinating village of Puerto Nariño, a town that actually has no cars or motorbikes, but it does have some spectacular views of the incredible jungle and the mighty Amazon River. Let's go. Our first stop of the day is at a small village called Macedonia, which has a population of around 1,300 people, where the local indigenous community welcomes you to experience their culture, food and customs. Hosting. And they also put on a daily dance performance, especially for the tourists, which I'll show you a little of very shortly. Wow. Hungry anyone? What are they? Yes, huh. you can actually eat those if you want to. This is a good place to buy some local handicrafts while also supporting the local community. First, we were taught a few words from the local language by our host for the day, who I'll introduce you to soon. And for a bit of fun, we were all invited to join in and dance. And now I'll introduce you to our host who speaks Spanish, Portuguese and English so you'll be able to speak to him in any of those languages when you come and pay a visit. So what is your name again? Uh, my name is Barry Jan. You are my friend. <laughs> thank you so much. Moi oinchi, moi oinchi. Moi oinchi means uh, thank you. Ah, uh, thank you so much. It's very kind. Yeah. Speak Spanish is gracias. This visit to Macedonia was obviously very touristy, but it was awesome to meet some of the local people who were so kind and welcoming, and I really hope to return someday. We then headed back to our boat before heading off to our final destination for the day, a town called Puerto Nariño, one of the most environmentally friendly towns in all of Colombia, and you'll soon see why. During the next leg of the trip, we caught an awesome downpour on the Amazon River. And after around an hour or more of traveling, we finally reached the jungle town of Puerto Nariño. With a population of 6,000 people, many of whom are from indigenous tribes. This town is located approximately 80 kilometers up the Amazon River from Leticia City. The daily temperature is usually around 30 degrees all year round and can be very rainy. Now this is called Puerto Nariño and it's a little town that has no, well, no roads, no cars, no motorbikes, nothing. Very natural. I think that's really cool. Amazon River is huge. To enter the town, it is necessary to pay a tourist tax, which at the time we visited was 15,000 Colombian pesos, which was around $3.50 US. As part of the tour we joined, a buffet-style lunch was included at this open-air restaurant, which serves local Colombian-style dishes made from local ingredients and fish from the Amazon. There's yuca and beans and rice and vegetables and plantain, and you are having a fish from the Amazon called Kidano Ku, I think is the name. Is this the the fish too? That's one kind of fish. Rice vegetables. Let me know what it's like. It's fishy. It's fishy. <laughs> it's good. But you love the juca, it's the first time oh, you've ever tried. So good. We then had some time to explore the town and our guide recommended that we take the two minute walk to a multi-level lookout with incredible views of the town and the Amazon River in the distance. Getting rained on, but it's worth it. Let's go. <laughs> Having so much fun. This is a cool place. I was expecting some little dirt road kind of place that would be boring, but it's actually really, really cool. I, I really like it. We're off to find the one viewpoint of the city, of the town. Go on in. Damn, steep. 
After a short but steep climb to the top, you will get some amazing views, so it's definitely worth going up. From here, you can see just how massive and wide the Amazon River is and get a sense of what it must be like for the locals who live in this town so deep in the jungle. So cool. And if you're a drone nerd like me, it's a great place to get some aerial shots. Come on. It was time to head down so we could do something else that our tour guide recommended to us. And this was to try some artisanal ice creams made from local Amazon fruits. Let's go get ice cream. Yeah. Let's try some flavors you've never tried before. Okay. Have you ever heard of Kopoasu, Arasa, Kamu Kamu, Asai? Okay, yours is called Arasa. Oh, it's nice. It's like yogurt, kind of. Yeah, it's, that one's with a milk base. Might apricot-like more, huh. I think. Yeah. What is your ice cream? <laughs> it's called Kopo Asu. And I have no idea what it tastes like, but... It tastes like guanabana, which is called sour sauce in English. So I think that's what it... I want a, a little bit passion fruit flavor. But this one is in a, a milk base as well, so it's kind of a creamy one. Mm. I'll give that a 7 or 8 out of 10. Then after a little stop for a sneaky beer, we headed off to the main park near the river to get some photos in front of the large and colorful Puerto Nariño sign and check out some of the statues of the Amazon wildlife. And then it was time to begin the two hour boat ride back to our hotel near Leticia, stopping one more time to try to catch a last glimpse of the famous pink Amazon dolphins. We finally got back around 6pm, just in time to catch one of the most stunning sunsets I've seen in my life over the magical Amazon River. Although this is our final day exploring the river and its towns, we're nowhere near done. I'm in the middle of the Amazon, in the middle of the night. Coming in part three is one of the coolest and also scariest experiences of my life. A nighttime walk through the jungle with sloths, tarantulas, and much, much more. Oh, I'm obsessed. Be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell button so you'll be notified each time I publish a new video. See you in part three.